but happy Easter. It's good to see you all here. Would you stand in worship with us this morning? Remember those walls that we called sin and shame If they were like prisons that we couldn't escape But he came and he died and he rose Those walls are rubble now Remember those giants we called death and grave they were like mountains that stood in our way But he came and he died and he rose Those giants are dead now Sing, this is our God and This is our God This is who he is He loves us This is our God This is what he does He saves us He bore the cross the grave, let heaven and earth proclaim, this is our God, the King Jesus. Remember that fear that took our breath away, a faith so weak that we could barely pray, but he heard every word, every whisper. Come on, welcome to Easter. There's actual sunshine outside. It's not snowing this year. Come on. Well, we are so happy to see all of you. Welcome to Easter. This is a celebration. This is where we get to be excited. We get to be joyful that our Savior is risen, that our faith, everything that we do means something because we get to celebrate today. How amazing is that? Well, we're just gonna take a few moments and we're gonna worship. We're gonna take all of the joy, all of the excitement that we talked about, and we're gonna express it in the way that we sing. 
and the way that we talk about our Savior. Let's worship. Praise the one who paid my debt. And oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised his life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised his life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one. Raise his life. 
For Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. It's like Jesus paid, for Jesus paid it all, and all to him I owe. For sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Oh, we thank you, Lord, that you already paid the price for me to be able to know you, for me to be able to have a relationship with you, Lord. Oh, we love you. there was a moment. There was a moment when the lights went out, when death had claimed its victory. The king of love had given up his life, the darkest day in history. They made for sinners For every curse is but atoned One final breath and it was finished But not the end we could have known Aren't you thankful for that? For the earth began to shake And the veil Torn. What sacrifice was made as the heavens roared? All hail King Jesus.
Amen. Jesus is on the throne. He is alive. That's what Easter is all about. Sometimes we forget that there was a story in the midst of all of this. Can you imagine what the disciples were feeling that Friday, that Saturday, whatever day it was in that time, the in-between. And I think that sometimes we come to church and everything's like, hey, the end of the story is he's alive. But we forget that some of us are still in the in-between. Some of us are still in that place between his death and his resurrection. We're still experiencing pain or difficulty or frustration, but Jesus is king. He is alive and we can live like he is fully alive. So if you're here today, my hope is that you get to experience the joy of a living God, that you encounter the love of Jesus through the people that you come face to face with. Worship is just one part of it, but everything that happens today is about Jesus. So let's pray, let's lift him up. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that you are alive. We thank you that you didn't stay in that grave. God, that Jesus, you came back to life. And today we celebrate your resurrection, but not just your resurrection from the dead. We celebrate the fact that your power can live in us, that we can experience resurrection in our families, resurrection in our, in our jobs, resurrection in our relationships. God, we can experience the goodness of all that you have for us when we lean into you. So today, Jesus, I pray for everyone, whether they're watching online or they're in this room, that there would be a sense of your presence in this place. Whether we're brand new to church or we've come every Sunday since we were little, Jesus, would we know your love? Would today be a moment of seeing you as that king on the throne, fully alive, fully present in our day-to-day -day lives. Jesus, we love you. We thank you for this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Hey, would you turn to someone around you this morning, uh, cross the room if you'd like to, go meet somebody you haven't met before and welcome somebody. Awesome, awesome. Welcome this morning. So good to be together. My name is John Michael. Uh, happy Easter. And this is my friend. Malachi. Nice Malachi. To see you. <laughs> we're part of the team here at Whitefish Assembly, and we're so happy that you're with us today. Um, whether you're a first time guest, or maybe you haven't been here since last Easter, or this is your every uh, week church, we're just so glad that you're here. A special welcome to those of you watching online. Hopefully, you are comfy and you are settled in. Honestly, I wish that I could do that as well, but that is okay. Uh, if you didn't know, we have a Whitefish Assembly app. Uh, how many of you guys would be honest and say you have way too many apps on your phone at this exact moment in time? I, I'm right there with you. You don't want to see my home screen. 
However, we don't want to just be another app. We don't want to just be more clutter on your phone. Uh, we make sure that it's updated with what's going on around here, uh, as well as an easy place for you to stay connected. That's right. And on the seat back in front of you, there's actually a sticker with a QR code. So if you don't have the app, you can just scan that with your camera app on your phone. Uh, it'll open up a link to all the different things going on in there. If you'd like to download the app from there, uh, reach out to our uh, various social media. Malachi has been running our social media, and we've been having a lot of fun here leading up to Easter. So make sure you get a chance to follow on there. But also in the seat back in front of you is a card that says connect. I'm going to challenge you. Reach out, grab that, pick it up right now. Um, the reason I want to highlight this is not just because if it's your first time, we'd love to have you fill this out just to let us know that you were here, but also because today, uh, this Easter, we are going to be, for every one of these Connect cards that we get back, we're going to be donating $5 to North Valley Food Bank. And we did this last time. It was well over five, dollars $600 we were able to donate. So if you fill out this card, whether you're a regular attender or it's your first time, and you give this either to us at the guest tent out there or drop it in one of the black boxes at the back of the room or the front door. We'll make sure that we are able to donate five bucks in your name. Um, well, I don't, I don't know if it's in your name or not. But anyway, one way or the other to make a di big difference out there. And there's a lot of ways to interact with this card, whether it's a prayer request or something uh, that you feel like you need to take a next step on. Um, you can fill that out on this card as well. Uh, you can also fill that card out on the app. Uh, and, and that does count towards the food bank, although we won't be able to do the like if you fill out both, one of each, although that go. would be pretty cool. <laughs> um, in two weeks, April 14th, uh, probably two of the most important things that ever happens at church, one of them being food, can I hear a hallelujah, yeah. come on, uh, <laughs> as well as baptisms. Uh, in two weeks, we're gonna have baptisms and barbecue. Uh, we love to celebrate life change. Uh, life change that has domino effects down the rest of your life and the lives of the people that you uh, reach. If you would like to be a part of baptism, if you uh, have given your life to Jesus and you would like to be baptized, you can sign up on that same Connect card. There's a little spot that says uh, more info about and you can baptism, whether on the app or on the card. Uh, and we're also just gonna celebrate and have some food. Uh, so you're not gonna wanna miss that. That's right. And next week, we're jumping into a brand new series about following the way of Jesus. If you didn't know, the early church was often called the way, um, not even before they were called Christians. And so um, we're talking about what does it mean to follow the way of Jesus? So this, the series is titled, This is the Way. And if you're a Star Wars fan, you might know a come little on, reference to that. Come on. This is the way, and we're gonna talk about that next week. It's a great time to come back, whether you have questions about Jesus, whether you've been following Jesus for most of your life, but you just wanna know how to grow deeper. We're really gonna lean into what it looks like to become like Jesus, and that's gonna be a great series. All the things going on around here, we want you to know we're so grateful that you're a part of it. If you are a guest, one of the things I also wanna mention, please meet me at the guest tent out there. We actually have a gift for you. And for everybody, there's still some Krispy Kreme donuts out there. So at the end of the gathering, go grab some Krispy Kreme donuts on your way out. Well, we want to get out of the way. Uh, but before Sean comes and brings the word, why don't you turn your eyes to the screen and check out this video. Good morning. It is so good to see you. It's always interesting on Easter, as many times as I've done this, multiple services, it's always interesting. You try to figure out, okay, what times of the morning can, can you schedule services to where you kind of balance out the, the, the two or the three, however many. And so it's always interesting. It's an experiment to see. We were, we've already done this one time. It was just packed in here. But it's kind of fun to have a little bit of a family feeling here this morning. Uh, what a great day to be in church. It is so much fun to be together. I, I don't know about you, but I look forward to not just Easter Sunday, but uh, Sundays in general and get to be with you. It's good to have some friends here. Uh, wow, uh, Nicole, it's good to see you here. What a great, great lady and her family. Uh, so many uh, to see you. 
I, I was thinking about it as I was standing over there how many times I've done this in my life. This is my 56th Easter uh, that I have been uh, on this planet alive. Uh, most of those have been a part of multiple services, Sunday evening times, and, and so well over 100 times I've met on Easter. Uh, some of you have that beat by a long ways. Uh, but my hope is, and, and this is one thing I was realizing as I was standing over there, that the older I get, the more I appreciate uh, this day. The more I appreciate thinking about what God has done for me, because you may not have heard this before around here, but the truth is we're, we're a church that exists to uh, let people know the perfect God through a family of imperfect people. We never claim to, be, to have it all together. We're just a bunch of people trying to journey through life and faith together and follow Jesus. And so we're glad you're here this morning. I, uh, I've been debating all morning whether or not to wear that stinking sling that I've been running around here in, uh, it, whether, what would be the most distracting, either wearing that the whole time I was speaking and you wondering, I wonder what he did. And let me just say, I fell. And so there you've got that. It was from 13,000 feet, but I fell. Um, uh, now you're really wondering what happened, um, but, which is 100% true. Um, either to wear that and be a distraction or take the chance of being up here and getting excited, reaching out, and it, it's tending to right now when I do this to just kind of dislocate. And so um, I'm a little bit worried. Uh, that I would do that, but I'm more worried about if I do that, what's going to happen? Because in the early gathering, Dr. Munzing was here. He's a family physician. He, he loves children, the whole family. He's got a little bit of sensitivity to him. I wanted him to come up and put it back into place if it comes out. But now all we have is my good friend, the ER doctor, Darren. Uh, ER doctors are always like, hey, hey. I've got this new method I need to try. <laughs> How's that? How's that feel? Um, but uh, so if there's anyone else, but Darren, let me know if that happens. Um, Easter and Christmas, it really is true, and this, this isn't going to make sense, but for a pastor, Easter and Christmas are two days that are the hardest days to come up with a message to speak, a, a topic, and you, I know that sounds dumb because, all right, let me, let me ask you, if you were speaking on Christmas, what would you talk about? The birth of Jesus. Birth of Jesus. Wow. We could trade places, because I've been working on, you'd think that'd be obvious. What about Easter? The resurrection of Jesus, you'd think that'd be easy as well, but there's something, you, you, there's this feeling of, oh, I talked about that last year. <laughs> what, I, what can I come up with? How many new interesting things can I come up with out of the Easter story to be interesting, to keep people's attention? What do I do? And I'm constantly, and we're trying to find these new ways to tell old stories, and, and, but the truth about it is... Uh, we're going to talk about the resurrection of Jesus. Amen. And it should never get old. If you, let, 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 me t let me tell you just a little bit of the roadmap for today. Um, at the end of our time together, uh, we are going to have a time that we can pray together. And here is my hope. My hope is that there are people in this room or watching online somewhere at home or on the road, wherever they may be, that there are people here that aren't followers of Jesus. Sometimes I think the church just gets so full of people that are followers of Jesus that we forget that there's people that are hurting out there that need to know this Jesus. And so I hope you're here and you'd say, if you were honest, it, I don't know about you, but in this world, with so many people putting on false fronts and just blatantly lying and to, to, to pursue their own agendas and things and all that we see on TV, I just, I just hope that there's a bunch of people that just want to be real. And, and honest and open. And so in, in that, I hope that there's a few in this room at least that would say, man, I'm, I'm, active, I'm not actively pursuing Jesus. And that you'd be honest. But the hope is by the end of today, you would say, man, I'm not following Jesus, but I think he made this day for me. And that this maybe is my day. 
And so that's our hope. I'm just going to tell you that's where we're going to get to. So you can kind of start thinking if, that's, if you're one of those people. But if you are someone who has followed Jesus for a long time, don't take yourself out of this mix today. Because this is going to be just as, be just as much about you and I as anyone else. Because how many know that the journey following Jesus is never over? And there's always stuff for us to learn and get better at. And we're all just a mess. We just are. We try, we try to look perfect. We're not. If, man, when I look in the mirror, I don't know about you, but I look in the mirror and go, hey. Not just physically, but, but oh, what I see. And there's so much that I, I need to learn in following Jesus. And so that's, that's what we're going to try to do um, today. It was the resurrection of Jesus that we're going to talk about that, uh, that really answers the question that everyone either sh should have asked sometime in your life or should still be asking the, the, one of the biggest questions of all time, and that is, who is Jesus and what has he done? And if you're new around here, we talk about Jesus a lot because following him is how we not only get to heaven, but how we can have a fulfilling life here on on earth and that he walks with us and he helps us uh, we we believe that it is because Jesus not only died on a cross but he rose again on the third day and is alive today that we can have life and so in a nutshell that's why we talk about him so much um, it was his resurrection that convinced the first century uh, uh, followers that were following him that he was who he said he was and that he could do what he said he could do. He said he was the savior of the world, of mankind, and they were watching to see if he really was. He made some promises that they were waiting to see if he would fulfill them, and he did what no other God has ever done. No prophet, no great teacher, no man, no one has ever done what Jesus did, and that was to literally conquer death. That yes, he was crucified, but yes, he rose again. And the story of Jesus um, without the resurrection really isn't worth telling. Uh, to be honest with you, I mean, it'd be a good story, but it, it, it is the resurrection that sets him apart from any other god or religious teacher or leader. Um, it would just be a good story if he didn't do that. Yes, he died a gruesome death but there's been a lot of martyrs. But Jesus did more than that. It's the resurrection that sets him apart from anyone else. And so we're going to talk about the resurrection today for a few minutes, and uh, it's going to be straightforward. Just, I, I tell you, I get so excited when I think about what we're going to talk about today. Uh, a simple message, but life-changing if you let it be. Um, today isn't just about the person that doesn't know Jesus, like I said, it's about all of us. And after Jesus was crucified, the people in the Bible had been proven right, truthfully, in their doubts. Um, you've been, you, you'd spend a lot of time hearing Jesus talk about how he was going to be the savior of the world, and yes, he was going to be crucified, but he was going to rise again, but you watch this great man, this great savior that you'd heard about all of your life uh, come, and you, in your heart you were like, this is the guy, but then you watched him be crucified and killed. And I don't know about you, but if I was there, there'd probably be a piece of me that said, oh great, if he's God, how in the world could he or why would he let men do what they just did to him? <laughs> so much for that. That was, that was a good ride while it lasted. Um, the only thing really that could change their mind would be if he did the last thing that he said he was going to do when he was telling them about this. But Again, I, don't, I think, if I'm honest, there would be a big piece of me that would doubt that he could or would do what he said he was doing. Man, I watched them kill him. Um, it's almost like, I, don't, I often, I confess, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a doubter sometimes. Sometimes I'm a pessimist. I, I, 
if I, I, I really work hard at that, trying to see the bright side of things, trying to see the hope in things. But uh, just lately, I've been trying to um, think about this. Uh, I really not just believe, but I know uh, that God can heal. Uh, I've seen it. I've seen miraculous healings in my life, a uh, time where God just chooses to heal. And so I've been praying for my shoulder. In, from, from all appearances, it's just shredded. And, and I know, though, that God can heal. But I've got to be honest, lately I've been praying, God, please, please would you heal this? I try to even be spiritual about it. There's too many people that you've called me to touch and minister to <laughs> on the golf course that, that just need me there. And so, Lord, would you? No, but there's a piece of me that, that prays knowing God can do it, but is he gonna? He said he would. He said he could, but is he going to? Um, have you ever been in a moment in your life when you realize, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. Anyone? Ever been in that moment where you realize, oh no. I would love to have a microphone and run around here and let you tell your moments. I'll bet there are some incredible stories in here. There's a couple that I remember, just those, oh no, what have I done moments. And if you're me, you know that <laughs> I've had a lot of those Oh no, what have I done? Uh, moments, I'm kind of known for that. Um, but a couple of them are this. We were, I was young, out of college, and we were traveling doing public school speaking in Nassau, Bahamas, and we went and we wanted to go scuba diving. And so we, we took this course and learned how to scuba dive and went out on this big boat to this reef, and there was a bunch of us. There was a couple young younger people, a bunch of middle-aged people, and then a bunch of elderly folks that were going scuba diving. And so our instructions were to go down to the bottom and kneel on the bottom of the ocean floor and just wait there until the instructor counted everybody. And I went down and I kneeled on the bottom of the ocean floor. Next to me was this older lady. I'll bet she was 75-ish. She was quite, uh, the older I get, I realize that's I'm not far from there, but, um, but at the time, at the time, I was, I was young, and I got down there, and um, it hit me that man isn't supposed to breathe underwater. <laughs> I, I don't have gills. This is not Atlantis. Uh, I, and, and I looked around me, and it was overwhelming, yeah. the water. How many have ever been scuba diving? I, I, I have to be honest, I freaked out. I couldn't breathe. And that moment where I realized it was awful. And I swam to the top while the old lady stayed down there. <laughs> Humiliating. I was thinking this week, another moment where I realized, oh no. I was in high school, I was a senior, and, and believe it or not, uh, the girls thought I was funny, but they didn't really think when it came down to dating that I was the guy to chase. Um, yeah, if they wanted to laugh, I was the guy they came to, but if they wanted to date someone, not so much. Um, but I begged and bribed one girl from the neighboring town that didn't know me to go out on a date, and we decided to go to a movie together. I had never really dated a lot, um, but it was on Friday night, we had a football game, a home football game, and, and uh, I, was, I was literally 125 pounds, six foot tall. I was small, and, uh, but growing up where I grew up, you know, they were begging people to be on the sports teams because anybody could be, you know, and, and so I, I was running down on the kickoff, and there was this kid from the neighboring town that we were playing. Uh, he went to block me, and he didn't really use very good form. He just literally went like this. And I saw him bent over trying to, and so I did what anybody would do. I just hit him and knocked him over. I mean, I was running fast. He was like this, and so it worked. But when I got past him, I, I came up short, and I realized something's not right. And long story short, I'd cracked my collarbone pretty good. And, and, uh, and so the, the next day, Saturday, I was supposed to go on this date, and, and I didn't want her to know that I was really a wimp. 
And, uh, and how'd you hurt yourself? Oh, I ran someone over. <laughs> I mean, just so I didn't wear a sling, a lot like that. And, they, uh, and then they have this, don't they, Dr. Brocky? They, they've got this thing that keeps you like this, and I didn't want to be embarrassed, so I took it off and didn't let her know what had happened. And, and uh, so we went into the theater, and I went in there, and there was a friend of mine that didn't know that I'd done that, and let's just say he had consumed some alcohol and uh, was rather feisty, and he grabbed me by my arm and said, Madsen, and he jerked me over a row of chairs um, and broke it all the way through. And, and, and I kid you not, this is 100% true. Um, the moment that I said, oh no, was, I sat there with her and I still didn't want her to know I was in pain. And so I'm wondering. <laughs> but then she heard it go, Ksh! when I moved, no kidding. She heard it, she goes like this. <laughs> I'm like, oh no. <laughs> it's one of those moments. Ksh! It did it again. I ended up on my first real date having my brother drive me and my girlfriend, my date, to the hospital <laughs> in a station wagon. It was one of those moments. We all have them, and there are times in our life when we all need help, and we need somebody else, and we're going to get there today. Um, We're going to talk about two different resurrection stories real quick. We're going to fly through this. The first one is that most of you know the story of Jesus being resurrected. In John chapter 20, Jesus had been buried. It was the third day. Mary came and saw the stone was rolled away. She went and talked to Peter and John, and Peter and John ran to the tomb. John looked in but didn't go in. Uh, Peter went in, and in John chapter 20, verse 6 and 7 says this. Then Simon Peter arrived and went inside. He noticed the linen wrappings lying there while the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up and laying apart from the other wrappings. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. But I've got some, some, some helpers. They're actually, I believe they're back, back here. I'm not going to let you see them totally, but are you, are you back here? Are you back here? Just peek around the door. Peek around the door. No, come, come, come this way. Peek around. The, wave at the people. She can't wave at the people. She'll be out in just a minute. Um, it says that the linens from his head was, was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. Now there's some teaching that's, that's kind of floated around that, that um, this is, it would be a comparison or an analogy of if a leader or a person, a rich man, was at a table and he was finished eating after dinner, he would just crumple up his napkin and throw it on the table, and that meant that he was done, he was leaving, not going to come back. But if he folded up the napkin and placed it neatly on the table, that meant, hey, I'm coming back. Be, and that really creates this cool analogy and comparison to, a, to where Jesus's, uh, the head wrappings were folded and neatly, and so, but the truth is I did some research, and, and that, that idea, that theory has only been around since like the internet started, and, and, but there's a lot of uh, uh, teaching that says that wasn't probably the case or comparison, but it's a cool thought to make. But one truth, one thing is true, and that is that, is that the, the wrappings being folded there was proof that it wasn't a robbery. It was a, one thing that said to the people, this wasn't people coming to steal Jesus' body because I don't know about you, but if I were going to steal a body back then, I probably wouldn't unwrap them after several days because they didn't have the cool embalming methods we have today. You know? but, yeah, so I wouldn't take the wrappings off. And if I did, say, say if I took the head wrappings off of just to make sure it was Jesus, I, I wouldn't take the time to fold them up neatly. And so it is a proof that it is, it, it is um, something that points to the fact that this was a bigger picture, a uh, bigger occasion than just somebody coming and stealing Jesus' body, that this was a, a supernatural event. Um, uh, 
Later, Mary, in the story, Mary was crying and saw angels at the tomb, and Jesus appeared to her and appeared to uh, the other disciples and showed him his hands and his feet to prove that he was Jesus. So keep that picture in your mind as we go to another story of a resurrection uh, in the Bible. In John chapter 11, a little prior to that, uh, in the, this story is full of incredible teaching points. If you want to read and just go through and, and really open your mind to some things you can learn from this, it's great. Uh, Mary and Martha sent word to Jesus, who wasn't uh, around them, uh, that Lazarus, his friend, a person that Jesus loved, uh, the brother, uh, was sick. And Jesus said to the disciples that were with him, he, he said, uh, Lazarus's sickness is not going to end in death is what he said, and so he didn't go to Lazarus. He just kept doing what he was doing with the disciples, and at some point in, uh, along the way, Jesus realized and knew, uh, because he's God, he knew that Lazarus had died, and he said to his disciples, Lazarus is dead. And I'm sure that the disciples said to Jesus, uh, I thought that you said that his sickness wasn't going to end in death, and Jesus said to them, for your sake, I'm glad I wasn't there. Because this will give you another opportunity, I like this, to believe in me. All right, come on, let's go there now. Jesus got there and he said to the ladies, your brother will rise again. And they said, yeah, we know. Um, and in John chapter 11, verse 25 through 27, it says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Because she said, uh, yeah, I know, you've told us that when people go to, you know, when the end of life is here, you'll come again, and, and people, the dead in Christ, will rise and go to heaven, and Jesus confirmed that and said, I am the resurrection and the life, the one who believes in me will live even though they die, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who has come into the world, and Jesus then went to the grave where Everyone was crying, Lazarus was inside, and Jesus said, uh, roll the stone away. It was the original Rolling Stones moment, <laughs> before the band. Um, and Martha, being practical like she was, she said, wait a minute, wait a minute, it's been four days. The body is going to stink. Anybody have a King James Bible in here? Would you? In the King James, it, it literally says, it will stinketh. <laughs> it does. And then Jesus responded, didn't I tell you that they would see God's glory if you believe? That you would see God's glory if you believe? So they rolled the stone aside, and then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. And I like this word, you and he, he's praying this in front of the people. You always hear me. But I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here so that they will believe that you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound in grave clothes, his face wrapped in a head cloth. Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him go. Now, two stories. They both were dead. And even though we verbally say that Jesus was dead, uh, there's almost this subconscious thought that he wasn't all the way dead. That yeah, he, was, he was God. So he was just like in supernatural hibernation. Or, or uh, he just unconscious. He, wa he wasn't all the way dead. And it, it really makes me think of one of the most theologically deep and correct movies that I've ever watched. Watch this. Love the Princess Bride. Oh, it's a great show. But Jesus was 100% God, and he was 100% man. 
And the biblical principle is that man will die. And it held true with Jesus' body as well. He died. He was dead. It wasn't just that he was asleep. Lazarus was dead. And so we're going we're gonna to do something. Lazarus looked kind of like this. Come on out, Lazarus. There's Lazarus. There she is. <laughs> I never thought that through when I recruited you. I know. Lazarus was a male. Yep. That's okay. Okay. All right. Several things. You just hang out there, would you? All right. Good. First thing is this. Incredible. Get this. Dead things come to life around Jesus. God brings dead things to life. The first story in the Bible literally is God created Adam, man. And then it says in Genesis 2, 7 that he then breathed into him and it gave him life. There's a story in Ezekiel about a bunch of bones that were lying there. Some of you know the story. And, and the prophet spoke to the bones and says, Dear, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these dead bones. <laughs> this is, I wish I could have been there. I mean, we've got movies and stuff where bones kind of take the shape and bounce, you know, <laughs> like puppets. I just see that in my mind. But the prophet says that the Lord says, I will breathe into you and you will come to life. The truth is, the Bible says that we all are sinners. All of us. Every one of us in this place uh, we are sinners. Uh, let me ask you, um, have you ever lied? You've lied? I'm going to set up some marital counseling. Have you ever lied to your wife? No, don't answer that. Uh, <laughs> so, so the question is, are you a liar? Okay, uh, let's see. Have you ever stole anything? You have? Well, there goes my image of you. <laughs> <laughs> So you're a thief. Hmm. I'm not going to ask a specific person this one, but has anyone in this room ever lusted in your mind over someone? The Bible says you think those things in your mind, you might as well be guilty of adultery, committing the act. So this is a room full of adulterers, thieves, liars, gossips, we're all that and more. And the Bible goes on to say that sin brings death. That we all, all, every one of us in this room deserve to die, not just physically, but spiritually. We've earned it because we've sinned. However, However, the good news goes on from there. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. I'm so glad there's a but. <laughs> Just go on, Sean. Don't stop there, Sean. Yeah. God is love, and this was manifested, the love of God towards us, because God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Dead things come to life around God. Second thing is this, Jesus didn't need help coming back to life. Lazarus did. No one had come to remove the stone for Jesus. No one on earth spoke life into, or breathed life into him. I don't think an earthly person unwrapped his grave clothes. Lazarus would still be in the grave if Jesus hadn't have called his name. But Jesus spoke his name and said, Lazarus, come forth. Call him by name. And that is what he has done and is offering to do for every one of us today. To literally call us from death to life. That he looked down through time and he saw you. For whatever reason you're here today, 
Maybe you're here because your mom made you. Maybe you're here just because you're with your girlfriend or boyfriend. Maybe you're here because you go to church every Easter. I, I don't know what the reason may be. Maybe you saw our ad online. I, I, it doesn't matter. But today, there's some that Jesus is calling, literally calling your name to take you from death to life because all of us need help. None of us can do that on our own. We just can't. Did you notice that even Lazarus couldn't even get out of his grave clothes by himself? Did you catch that? He called Lazarus forth. He was, Lazarus came out and he was alive, but he couldn't get out of his grave clothes and he said, someone help him take off his grave clothes. Is there someone to help you? Did you keep someone? Oh, good. <laughs> help her out. Take This may, seem, this may seem like a silly, a silly little simple illustration, but all of us need help. And when I told you earlier that this message isn't just for those people that aren't following Jesus, here's the principle, and look, look right here, let them, let them finish. But look right here. You can be alive in Christ but still be wearing grave clothes. You may have your ticket to heaven, but like I said earlier, this journey is lifelong. You can go, thanks, you're awesome. Here, leave me a little bit up. I'll just take a little. Um, for those that have served God a long time, you know it's, it's a journey. And there's times when I, I, I look in the mirror and I still see stuff. And I can't help but think, I thought I got rid of that. And I, I gave my heart to Jesus 20 years ago. I'm still struggling with my thought life. I'm still struggling with temptations. I'm still struggling with jealousy or gossip. But... And Jesus, this is a picture that Jesus said, I'll help you. I'll call you from death to life, yes. But it doesn't stop there. It will continue on. And he and maybe other people will help us get rid of our grave clothes over time. And that's what following Jesus is about. Let's close with this. We are God's masterpiece. Stick with me while I bring this to a close. The ultimate crowning jewel of God are those that he has literally brought back from death to life. The truth is God loves to show us off. As a matter of fact, he created us to be a reflection of himself. And he loves to be able to say, look, they look like me. As a parent, have you ever done that? As a bring, my life, I was adopted. My brother and sister, two sisters, they were adopted. My wife was adopted. Uh, her brother was adopted. One thing that through my life, I, I never had anyone that looked like me, even my twin sister. She didn't look like me. I never had somebody look like me. But then I had girls. Because <laughs> I'm thinking about it, I don't know why there was pride in me for thinking they looked like me. It was probably sad for them. <laughs> but, but there was something like, they look like me. And Jesus is like that with us. We're not always a good reflection of who he is, but if we're trying, if we're trying to let him take our grave clothes off, he'll say, look at my, my child. Follow them as they follow me. And as we strive to become more like him, we literally make him smile. He points to us and says, look what I can do with a life that surrenders to me. 
Romans 6, 4 says, For we died and were buried with Christ, and just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. <laughs> it goes on to say this. Death no longer has any power over him. It was talking about Jesus. He died to defeat sin, and now he lives for the glory of God. So you should consider yourselves dead to sin and able to live for the glory of God through Christ Jesus. That as we try to get rid of our grave clothes and change and allow ourselves to become more like him, we bring him glory, we bring him honor. We point to him and people. Have you ever done that to where you're just walking along in a crowd of people and stop and go? Before long, there'll be somebody standing beside you. I've done this. We used to do this just for kicks. There'd be 20 people standing. And that's what happens. That, that as we become more like Jesus, that we look more like him. He says, look at them. They're my kids. They take after me. <laughs> and Paul is writing to the followers of Jesus in Ephesus. Remember, he's writing to the church. And he says this. But God is so rich in mercy, and he loves us so much, that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. So God, <laughs> so God can point to us. Get this. In all future age, ages, as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards us as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. God saved you by his grace when you believed and you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we've done so none of us can boast about it for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. That he looked down in time and saw you and said, yeah, they're sick. But their sickness isn't going to end in death. And today I want to pray for two different kinds of people that, that are here watching online. And the first one is, and, and I told you this at the beginning, the first one is, is if you're in this place and you'd say, if you were honest, almost everyone likes to call themselves Christians, but I love it when people are honest and say, I'm, I'm not. I'd rather that than people lie. But I would guess that there's one, two, three, in this room, that if you were honest, you'd say, I'm not following Jesus. Maybe I made that commitment a long time ago, but I've just kind of walked away from my faith and got a little lost in life, and uh, I'm not following him. Or maybe you've never made that decision. But I would hope that two things are true, and not just that one. I would hope that there would be a couple in this room that would say, I'm not following Jesus. However, I would like to. And today is my day to make that decision. I'm hoping you're here. I'm hoping you're watching online. And that's you. And the second person I'd like to pray for is those that have served Jesus a long time or you've already made the commitment, maybe it was even just a year ago, but if you were honest, you, you, you'd have to say, gosh, I'm still living in these. I, I stopped at the whole Sean come forth part of the story. 
And I didn't let God, I'm, I haven't been letting God continue the process of getting rid of the stuff. And you'd say, I'd admit it. Those are the two people I'm speaking to today. And so this is, this is kind of a traditional thing, but I, I, I don't always do this, but I'm going to this morning. I just ask that you would close your eyes just to, and so you can think about yourself and not someone else. Um, and the first question I ask, are you here? And you would say, number one, I'm not following Jesus. I'm not actively following him. And that's the truth. Whether you have in the past or not, you'd say, I've just kind of walked away from my faith. Maybe you've been hurt by a church. If you have, I'm so sorry. Maybe you've been discouraged and been through hurt and for whatever reason, you're not following Jesus. But the second thing is that you would say, I, I think today's my day to either come to him or come back to him. And I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to bring you up front. I, I just want to pray for you and with you. If that's you, would you just slip up your hand and hold it up for a minute? Just so I can see that and pray. You bet. You bet. Yeah, I, and I'm not going to exaggerate the numbers. I, I see three. Is there anybody else? I wish I could see those watching online at home. But the second question is, you've given your heart to Jesus and, and you've committed to follow him, but... Um, You've just kind of stopped there or got stalled and you want to continue the process. You want to say, man, I want to become a better masterpiece, a better reflection of God. And that's you. You'd raise your hand right now. Just being honest, there's quite a few. Yeah, yeah. you bet, you bet, yeah. So Lord, um, I thank you for today. Lord, this isn't about a show. It isn't about gimmicks. It's not about lights. It's not about songs. It's about you. And I love it that there were at least three people that were honest and just said, man, I'm not actively pursuing God. And I know in heaven you're, you're just like, wow, it's refreshing to have people honest. But I pray God as... They would say, this is my moment, and I ask, Lord, as they confess that you are Lord, as they repent of their sin, your word says uh, that if we repent and say we're sorry for our sin, that you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, as they say, I, I, I know I, I'm not going to be perfect, but I, I want to get back on track, and I, I want to pursue Jesus. Lord, I pray you change them from the inside out, that you would let them know you're proud of them and not ashamed, that there is no guilt from you. And Lord, for those that were honest and said, man, I've kind of stalled in the whole journey as far as becoming more like Jesus, Lord, help us all to actively pursue you. I love you, Lord. You are good to us. Amen. I would say this, and then I'm going to get out of the way. Uh, if you prayed either one of those prayers, especially the first one, please don't just leave. Um, at least write on a connect card. I gave my heart to Jesus so that we can know and pray for you. I promise you, Tuesday morning, we're going to be praying for everyone that puts a request on the Connect cards, either uh, in front of you, putting them in the boxes or online, Tuesday morning or Tuesday, Tuesday midday. We will pray for you. I don't want, that, one thing that happens in churches too much is we pray prayers like this and then just kind of leave it at that. But we want to know 
and be able to pray with you and for you. And if you need anything, let us know. So please do that. If you prayed that prayer or maybe you've done that in the past, but you feel you need to get baptized, man, in two weeks, we're going to celebrate together and we'd love to celebrate with you. Let us know that. And we'll do that together. So we're going to close today in a way that I think is appropriate. Uh, thanks for your patience uh, today. It's about Jesus. And what a celebration today. The Bible says that in heaven there is a party going on right now. So would you stand? Let's sing. Yeah, let's end today in celebration. Yeah, please sing with us. This is our God. This is who he is. He loves us. This is our God. This is what he does. He saves us. He bore the cross. from my grave, Yahweh, Yahweh, who gets the glory and praise, nobody but Jesus, who rescued me from my grave, Yahweh, Yahweh, who gets the glory and praise, nobody but Him, this is our God, this is who He is, He loves us, this is our what he does, he saves us. He bore the cross, beat the grave, let heaven and earth proclaim. This is our God, King Jesus. He bore the cross, beat the grave, let heaven and earth proclaim. This is our God, King Jesus. Hey, thank you so much for coming and spending your Sunday with us, with other Easter plans and stuff going on. Thank you for taking some time to come and spend this with Whitefish Assembly. If this is your first time, uh, man, we just want to especially say thank you for joining us. If you have any prayer requests, any uh, maybe it's your first time here, we would love to connect with you, like Pastor Sean said and some others. If you would take that Connect card and put it in one of the giving boxes in the back, the little black boxes, we're going to be donating $5 for every Connect card that comes in to the local food bank. And uh, we would just love to connect with you more, answer any questions that you might have. But all of that to say, thank you so much. And uh, next Sunday, we're starting a brand new series about what does it look like to actually follow Jesus, right? What does it look like in our daily life, Monday through Saturday, outside of this moment, to follow him and grow closer to him. So we'd love for you to be a part of that. Thank you for coming today and have a great rest of your Easter. Hey everyone, I'm John Michael. I just want to say thanks so much for tuning in and joining us at Whitefish Assembly Online. I love that we can be the church, we can be a church family wherever we are. And I hope that you felt welcome all throughout this time. A couple things to remind you about is you can connect with us online at whitefishassembly.com. If you'd like to fill out a connect card, just go to whitefishassembly.com slash connect or slash prayer for the prayer card. And of course, if you'd like to give, you can do that at whitefishassembly.com slash give. Your giving makes a difference. We love that you are part of the family here at Whitefish Assembly, and we look forward to seeing you back here next week at the same time. God bless.